Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and I run the blog lifefromtheviolasection.com where I share my favorite practice tips, general advice, and tech for musicians. If you see a tail or any fuzz in the screen, that is because Pacho is here to help me tell you all about Fourscore's newest update, which is their version 15, to go along with iOS 26, which was just released this week. I'm super excited about it. I didn't really love the liquid glass look when it first came out, but now that I'm using it on all of my different Apple devices, I'm actually really enjoying it. And I've been able to customize it in ways that really work for me. And I, I do like a lot of the transparency in it actually. So whether or not you are able or want to update, although you should eventually because um, because all updates add security updates as well. So the further behind you are on updates, the more susceptible you are to getting hacked or for you to get a virus on your device. So definitely update at some point. For those who have updated to iOS 26 already or are planning to, I'm going to show you what Fourscore 15 looks like now in this new update. But if you're not able to update or if you don't want to just yet, at the end of the video, I will show you what Foursquare 15 looks like in iOS 18, which is the last update before 26. I know the numbers are a little bit weird, but that's just what they gave us. So let's dive into Foursquare. Let's check out what is new. It looks really cool and I'm super excited to go through it with you guys. So here's Fourscore 15. When you're just looking at your music, it looks exactly the same, but if you tap to look at the top bar or title bar as they call it, it looks a little bit different. It has the same kind of style as Safari does now and as a lot of the native Apple apps do now where the tabs are kind of just rectangles that are floating in a more transparent background. So, the general layout is still the same. I do like how the tabs are more just floating. There's an easy um, plus button. Hold on, let me let me use my trackpad. So hopefully you'll be able to see my cursor now. Also, if you use a trackpad or a mouse with your iPad, the cursor looks different now. It's a little arrow instead of just that circle that it used to be. Anyway. There's this nice little plus button to open a new tab and it does open the same thing again, but then you can go over to your scores and find whatever you want and open it there. So of course you have to enable tabs if you don't know how to do that or would like some help. I have a short video and I have a longer tutorial that shows you exactly how to do that. I will link those in this video. Be sure to check those out if you'd like some help, but I just recently actually started adding tabs to my workflow and it is so nice because a lot of times when I'm teaching, I'm going back and forth between a lot of the same things because right now a lot of my students are preparing for a local audition. So I can just leave that tab open with their music so that when I work with them, it's always right there and I don't have to search through my whole list of scores to get to it. Anyway, this video is not really about tabs, but the tabs do look a little bit different and I really like it. Honestly, I really didn't like how the tabs looked in the last four score version. They looked very just kind of old and stale and I, I just didn't really like the color. I know it's a very trivial complaint, but I like this a lot better. It just, it looks so much sleeker. So the title is still the same. You click on the title and it takes you to metadata. There isn't really anything new in the metadata tab, but you can now adjust the tempo. Let's just say this is 60. Whereas before you would have to go over to the metronome to set the tempo. You can also adjust the duration and the key in the metadata properties right here as well. So you can see everything just has this new look to it and is a lot sleeker. It really matches with the design of iOS 26. Some apps haven't quite gotten there yet. Fourscore absolutely has. Okay, you'll notice that to the left of the title, this icon looks a little bit different, but it still takes you to the same display options and these all look and act exactly the same. They just gave you a different looking icon for it. Then there's a little down arrow. I believe that this was like a little three dot menu before. You click on it though, and it gives you basically the same options as before. It just looks a little bit different. Also, interesting. I, I haven't really noticed on my iPad yet how like the highlight works. It's interesting. I, I think I like it. It's just different. <laughs> okay, so one of the biggest differences is going over to your library. It looks 
pretty similar, but just a little bit different. Also, if you see that everything is purple now, um, I just changed the default colors in Fourscore, and honestly, I like it so much better. <laughs> I don't know why I waited five years to do that, but I did. So let's go through some of these changes. It now just says all scores, which is how I was sorting my music anyway. There's a nice search bar right up here, which I should really start using instead of scrolling and scrolling. If I know exactly what it's called, I should just search it and then I'll find it so much faster. You can now see metronome speeds right here underneath the titles and you can easily switch between recently played, which honestly is gonna be so helpful as a teacher. Could also be very helpful if you're doing ensemble rehearsals and you're cycling through the same pieces many times, or really just you know keeping track of the music that you're working on within a week. That, that's gonna be super nice. Then you can sort by composers, genres, tags, and labels. I'm just gonna keep it on all scores because that's how I had it before. It's also sorted a little bit nicer alphabetically. It was already alphabetically, but you can see the letters of the alphabet just a little bit better. So it's easier to kind of keep track of where you are as you're scrolling, especially if you're scrolling quickly, like I usually do when I'm trying to talk to a student and open their music at the same time. <sighs> yeah. Okay, the other biggest change in this tab, which I think is really cool, is the grid view. So this is a list view where you know you can see the title and everything, but we can go to grid view and it shows you a little preview of what the music actually looks like, which is so cool. And now I don't know if I'm gonna keep it like this, but I could see this being really helpful when I have scores that are very similar or two different versions of the same thing and I need to quickly see which one is which, I could more easily see which one is which. Also in this preview, you can see what I've written on the music. This is just really cool. It definitely takes you longer to scroll through things, but I mean, that could be super helpful, especially if you're a visual person and you know exactly what the music looks like. Backups are now easier to navigate as well. So if you go to the briefcase, we will scroll down until we see backup, it's third from the bottom. Click on that and then you'll see any backups you have recently deleted and recently updated. But now there's an easy to find plus button where you can create a backup or an archive. They've also updated their MIDI features quite a bit. So it's a lot easier to work with MIDI and use that to control your scores. I haven't dabbled too much in the MIDI features, but I absolutely can in the future so I can help you guys understand those a little bit more as well. Now onto annotations. They work exactly the same. They haven't changed what your presets are or anything. They just look a little bit different. Now with iPad OS 26, you can kind of just hover over the top of the screen and you'll get a menu bar very similar to what you see on a desktop. So four score is about and preferences just like it is on a Mac and preferences just takes you right to settings about four score takes you to some information about the app file gives you the option to import add scores from different locations edit the score share print show in library and now just like a desktop you can see the keyboard commands that will let you do these things so if you do use a keyboard like i do when i teach and i'm sitting at my desk i use my logitech combo touch case which has a keyboard and trackpad because I just love having a trackpad and not always have to, having to scroll on the screen or use the Apple Pencil. I'm just, I'm a laptop kind of person. So I like having a similar setup to that on my iPad. But if you do use a keyboard, you can just find these keyboard commands a lot easier without having to always Google it. I of course always use copy and paste and things like that, but sometimes for different apps, different buttons will give you different functions. And it's nice to have that guide just right in the app anytime that you need it. Finally, Fourscore 15 works with the new kind of Windows layout on the iPad. Um, you can keep everything full screen just as you're used to if you want, but this is a nicer, more updated version of what they tried to do before with Windows. So you can resize it however you like. Let's do about like that. Then holding your finger or your mouse towards the top will let you click and drag to move it somewhere else. 
Then you can open any other apps that you want and you can kind of use those apps in tandem, just like you would be able to on a desktop. So this will be really helpful when I'm writing notes out for students on what to practice for the week. So we'll go back to the home screen. I just clicked in the background and that took me there. I'll go to Google Docs and it opened in the size that I last used it. Now I'm gonna open my template lesson notes so that you don't see any private information. And I can resize this however I want it. So I can also zoom in. So now even though I'm not selecting the four score window, I can change the zoom there however I want. We can zoom in a little bit, get rid of some margins so that I can basically see the whole thing. We can move this over a little bit and then I can edit in this and write out my student notes. Then I can easily scroll in this without clicking and changing the format like this. I can just do that and then I can just scroll. Now, if I wanna change the page, I am gonna to have to go into this window and I can't figure out how to turn the page. <laughs> now I can change the page. So I don't know if, oh, and now my cat is walking on the keyboard. So let's move him. And that was a nice note from Pacho there. <laughs> but you know, this is the first version of iOS 26. So there will always be some bugs that they have to work out and then they'll release future smaller updates to help with those things. So that could just be one of those things. So here's what Fourscore 15 looks like in iOS 18. So if you haven't updated, this is what it's gonna look like. It looks super similar to how it did before, but some of the updates are still here, like being able to see the metronome numbers in this menu under the titles of your scores. The organization is now updated as well. You can see that the tabs look the same as they did before, but the icons um, to the left of the title of your score are updated as they are in iOS 26. So like all of the features are here, just some of the kind of glass screen effects are not in this version. Even if you haven't updated to iOS 26, you can still use grid view in this version of Foursquare 15, which I think is super exciting. All right, so there's your overview of Fourscore's 15th major update, and they say that this is their biggest change since the first version. So it's really cool to see this and to share it with you guys. If you have any questions about how this works, please leave them down below. I will, of course, reply to your comment, and I very well might make a Fourscore Friday video for that. If you don't know, every Friday, I post a short video over here on YouTube, a reel on Instagram, and a TikTok, all going over one little tip or trick within Fourscore, they're all pretty short videos. So if you would like to know how to use Fourscore smarter, definitely check those out. I have a whole playlist of them and I upload those every single Friday. If you'd like to catch more of my content, please be sure to subscribe. Again, leave any questions down below and I will see you again next week. Thanks for watching.